G'day legends, in this video, I'm gonna take you through Kive Audio's Filk channel and how we can use this plugin to really bring our tracks to life and make them way more exciting. So check this out. <laughs> So if you guys like this plugin, check out the description link below and there'll be a link to it to where you can go and grab a copy of it. And by using that link, you really help support this channel as well. Okay, so let's solo these drums. That's a massive difference. So the drums have way more color, a lot more weight to them now. They're more exciting and they sound a whole lot bigger too. So. Let's run through how we're doing this. So this is Kive Audio's Filk Channel Strip Mark II. So they've just done a major update to this and they've added some extra modules. So down the bottom of these, you have different pre's. So this is like our saturation modules here. You can really drive the sound and get it kind of gritty. And then you've got a mix knob here and another type of saturation within each module. So there's almost four types of saturation here that you can play between. And then over here, we have our EQ module and this has three types of EQ as well. So EQ1, EQ2 and EQ3. And they're all very different types of EQ. So depending what the track needs will really depend on which EQ you gravitate towards. And then there's two compressor modules. So they've got the first comp and then the second comp and they're very different styles of compression. Compressor two feels a bit more like a vibey kind of compressor. It's a bit grabby, it's a bit gluier sounding. Whereas compressor one really controls the sound of things really well. It really grabs a hold of it. It sounds pretty transparent too, so I'm gonna show you these two compressors and all the modules and how I'm using these to bring these drums to life. So the way I approached these drums was a top down approach for this mix because I wanted to see what we could do with the Filk channel on the drum bus by itself. And I gotta say, I was pretty blown away by what I could achieve just on the drum bus. So pretty powerful. So a cool thing is when you flip between the different pre's, it actually remembers the settings that you had on the previous one. So you can go try a different one out. If you don't like it, you can jump back to the previous settings you had. I think that's a really cool feature. So I'm just using a tiny bit of saturation here, just a little bit. So I went with EQ2 on the drum bus, just doing a little bit of a high shelf boost, about five dBs and then about 6.7 dBs on the low shelf and then 3.7 dBs at 2.3K. So you can pick a presence frequency that you wanna boost or cut with this final knob down the bottom here. I'm not really going for that rocky stadium, 8K bright snappy top end of the snare. I'm going for that kind of more funky mid range kind of sounding snare drum. This is a bit more of like a John Mayer-esque kind of track. So I think that brings the drums to life already. All right, then some compression. Let's check this out. So already just this on the drum bus is making the drum sound so much cooler. They just sound so much bigger, more exciting, a lot more life to them. Basically with this compressor, you just drive it in until you get the desired amount of gain reduction. You can see it's got a clip light up here, so I'm causing a little bit of clipping, which can be a desired effect. You can just pull the output down. but I'm just chasing a couple of dBs of gain reduction here. Just wanna bring out the essence of the kit, bring the cymbals up a little bit, just glue it all together. We've got a three to one ratio, and then we've got the type of compression. We've got normal and bus. And I think bus is a little bit more relaxed. It's not as aggressive. I 
naturally just doesn't compress quite as hard. So it maybe has like a slower attack on it. Got a side chain feature. So if your source has a lot of low end and you don't want it to compress as much, you can pull that side chain up and it won't react to the low end as much. And of course the trusty mix knob. I'm just going for hundred percent today. All right, so that's our drum bus. Let's take a look at our kick. So we've got a couple of kick channels here all blended to our kick bus. I've already gated these and I took out some annoying frequencies in the main kick mic. There's a little bit of this annoying clicky sound. So just trying to pull a little bit of that out before we go into really processing this. And then on our kick bus, we've got Filk channel again. And again, just a little bit of saturation. I really like Filk Pre 1. I think this is a really nice sounding saturation, but I only have a tiny bit of this dialed in anyway. Just having it on gives it a bit of color, but then I've just got the mix knob at 24%. I don't really want the kick too crunchy sounding. And if it is too crunchy, you can always pull it back into the minus and that will just dial back the amount of crunch and saturation you're getting. And then on our EQ, so I've gone with EQ1 for the kick and you can choose between a high shelf and just a bell. I've got it on high shelf at the moment and I've got it at 2.2K and I'm pulling out 5 dBs. I'm going for more of that sort of like thick, pillowy kind of kick sound. I don't want this to be like a big boomy rock kick. I'm going for a bit more funky, pillowy, you know, low mid sort of kick sound. Done a little boost at 106 Hertz. And then I have the high pass filter set to 50 Hertz. I'm trying to take a little bit of sub out of the kick. And then I've done a low pass filter up to 6.2K. So getting rid of some of that really high clicky sound. So again, going for that more mid range kick sound. Now I'm using compressor two and I'm pushing the gain up about four dBs to get the desired amount of gain reduction. So I've got the compressor set to limit and I have a kind of medium release time, slower attack, and then the mix knob set to 53%. So you can hear we've kind of warmed the kick up a bit, taking a bit of that clickiness out of it. It's a little bit punchier now. So I like that. I don't want a clicky kick sound. I want it to be warmer, but still kind of punchy. Okay, next we're gonna go over to our snare drum. And again, we have a couple of channels here, just a snare sample and then our main snare mic and our snare bottom mic all blended together. These have some gating and cymbal bleed stuff going on to kind of contain that already. So then we've got Filk channel again, and this is what our snare sounds like with all of our settings on. It's a bit chunkier sounding. The raw snare sounds cool. Like I love the sound of that raw snare. It's really cracky and snappy, especially with what we already did on the drum bus. But I felt like I needed to thicken this up a little bit in the mix. So basically we have a pre two this time and the mix is set to 73%. And then I'm just pushing this up to about five on the saturation and we have it on saturation one. Given a bit of bite. And then over to our EQ, we have it on EQ1, and we are just doing a bell boost at 7.4K, a little boost here, about 2.5 dB. And then we've got a big boost at 200 Hertz, about 5 dB there. And then we're boosting some mid range at 380 Hertz, about 2.5 dB. I like that kind of ringy sound in the snare, and I want to bring it out in this track. A lot of times you kind of want to cut that sort of area on a rock sort of snare drum. But in like a, a funky, a bluesy kind of snare sound, sometimes you want to bring out that mid range a little bit more as opposed to getting that sort of smiley face snare sound. You actually want to bring out the mids more. So yeah, it's making it nice and thick, bringing out the mids and the low end a little bit as well. I'm actually going to low pass this up to about 15K. And then we've got our compression module. We've got a two to one ratio and then a medium release time. We want to kind of let the snare kind of breathe between the hits. It's not, I don't want that fast release where everything sort of jumps back up really quick. 
want to let the snare kind of just like breathe with the music. And then again, boosting the comp gain up about 6 dB to get the desired amount of gain reduction. Mix knob at 100%, slow attack again, let some transient through. So it sounds kind of harsh when you bypass this. The compression's really helping the snare kind of glue together, but also bringing the ghost notes out a little bit more, which is really nice. Already that's sounding really nice. Okay, next we're gonna go over to our toms and we're gonna do our rack tom first. This is what it sounds like without field channel. Yeah, it's not bad. We've got all that bus processing going on already, so it's definitely helping it. And I've got silencer on here, getting rid of the cymbal bleed. Now this one, I didn't boost anything in the saturation module, kind of just left it on, it's just adding a little bit of color to it. And then we came over to our EQ and used EQ2. And we're doing a big boost on the high shelf, about 11 dB. No boost to the low end. I feel like there's already enough low end in this tom. And then we're doing about a two to three dB boost at 1.5K, just to help the tom stand out a little bit. So it definitely gives it a little bit more attack and cut in the mix. And then over to our compressor, we've got compressor one. We're just pushing this in to get a couple of dBs of gain reduction. definitely brings it to life. One thing worth mentioning is you can rearrange these. So you can set this up in any order you like. For me, I'm typically gonna go something like saturation, EQ, compression. So I'm just keeping it as is. I don't really feel like I need to reverse the order of these at the moment. And then for our floor tom, pretty much just copy pasted the settings, just pulled a tiny little bit of the top end out. So we're going about eight to nine dB boost instead. I think that sounds all pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look at our overheads and let's look at a section where there's lots of symbols going on, like the chorus. Okay, so I really thin this out. I wanted to get rid of a lot of the kind of murkiness and muddiness that the cymbals are kind of adding to this. The drums were tracked in a smaller room and they're kind of dark cymbals as well. So they have this kind of low overtone that's sort of washing through everything. And in the mix, kind of just makes it all sound a little dirty. So again, just the saturation module, not doing anything crazy here. I don't really want to saturate the overheads. So that's just adding that little bit of color. And then we're just doing a bunch of cutting with EQ1. And so at 16K, I've pulled down about two dB. And that's basically because I did a big cut down here at 260 Hertz. So we're pulling down about seven dBs here. And then that made the top end really bright. So I just did a bit of a cut at 16K to take out that really high end out of the cymbals. And then we've done a little bit of a cut around 2.4K. Just kind of a, a, a gross resonance in the cymbals. I didn't really like the sound of that, so pulled a bit of that out. And then a low pass filter to 15K. Again, sort of just dealing with that really high frequency stuff in the cymbals. So it's really bringing out the ride in a nice way and it's just fitting out the sound. We've got the big, we've already got a big kick and snare and tom sound. We don't need the overheads to be too big in this mix. And then just a touch of compression, three to one ratio and just about four dBs of gain reduction when the snare is hitting. So it's just really controlling the sound. It's making it smaller so that it's not taking up as much space in the mix. So I like the sound of that. Now the room sound. So I've added a LX480 to this with a large wooden room setting. It's kind of subtle, but it is making it sound bigger because this was recorded in a smaller room. We need to add a bit more sense of depth and space to that room mic. And then we've got our filk channel after that. And we're going a little bit harder on this one, being a little bit more creative here. So we're pushing the saturation into nearly 10.
you know, just adding a little bit of grit to it. And then over here, we've got EQ2. And this one, we're pulling out some top end. Pulling out a bunch of low end. I mean, the low end in that sounds great, but in the mix, it's all just getting a bit boomy. So I'm basically trying to bring out the mids in this room mic to add a little bit of dirt to the drums in that way without it kind of blowing out the low end and adding some annoying brightness to the top end. And then a little boost at 1K, again, trying to bring out that mid range a little bit. So again, the raw sound of these is, is really nice, but we're just sort of like crafting it into a slightly different sound that's not gonna take up as much space because we already have all that brightness in our overheads and we have all the boominess in our kick already. So we don't need as much of that stuff in the room mic. And then we push in our compression, we're going a bit heavy with this, four to one ratio and just kind of slamming it. So really transform that room sound into something different. Now we're gonna pull that down quite a bit in the mix because we don't want heaps of this in there. So it's subtle and it's adding more depth and space to the drum mix without the drums kind of getting blown out by too much room sound now. And then lastly, we've got our kick, snare, toms, overheads and room, and these little hi-hat foot overdubs being sent into our drum crush bus over here. This is like our parallel compression. And on this one, we've got the filk channel and it's mostly kick, snare and toms. There's a tiny bit of cymbals and overheads in here, but yeah, it's mostly those close mics. And we are again, being pretty creative with this and pushing it pretty hard. So we've got Filk Channel 1 and we're driving this right up to about 18. Let's check this out. So adding some grit to these drums, I like that. Now our EQ, a tiny little boost to the low end, about 1 dB on the EQ2. And then we have a boost at 5.6K, about one dB there as well. So just adding a tiny little bit of excitement to this. And then some compression with comp two. Two to one ratio, pushing the gain in quite hard and a fairly fast release, not the fastest, but a fairly fast recovery there and the mix at 100%. All right, so it's adding some bigness, some attack, some aggression, I like it. And now we're just gonna blend this in with the rest of the drum mix. Sounds pretty good to me. So let's have a little reminder of what it sounded like before we used Filk Channel. I love how much life that has brought to these drums. Now the rest of the mix. So let's take a look at the bass. Now the bass to me, getting a little bit like woolly sounding in the mix. I wanna bring out a little bit more of that sort of nice subby low end. So if you're just listening on a phone speaker, you probably can't really hear much difference. But if you're listening on something that actually can reproduce bass properly, you would have heard that the frequencies kind of shifted a bit more into that lower subby area of the mix. So let's go through these settings. We've got pre two and we're driving this kind of hard. So 
We've got on saturation type 2, push it up to about 16, with the mix knob at about 36%. So you can hear it's bringing out some more mids in the bass, which is going to be helpful once we do our next thing, which is our EQ. So this is an interesting EQ. It's two shelves, so you've got a 15k shelf that you can boost or cut, and a 60 hertz shelf that you can boost or cut. And then we've just got a mid frequency that we can boost. So what I'm doing here is I'm boosting 60 hertz, about 10 dB. And then we're boosting at 1.4, about 4 dB, okay? And now this is where it's all gonna come together with the compression. This is gonna rain it all in for us. So we're pushing this in to get a couple of dBs of gain reduction. Cool, and in the context of the mix, So you can hear it sounds way richer in the mix now, and that's kind of what we want. Now, electric guitar. So this is all our rhythm guitars bust here. They don't sound bad. They may be a little bit kind of mid-rangey. So we're gonna use Filk Channel to add some presence to this. So we pulled the saturation back. So we don't want too much grit added to these guitars. The mix knob's at 25%. So this really isn't doing much. This is just kind of sitting here, perhaps adding a little bit of color, but it's very subtle. Now, the main thing we're doing is some EQ and compression. And on our EQ, we've got EQ2 and we're boosting at 5.6K. So this is where most of the work's happening. We're getting a little bit of jangly presence out of the guitar. I think that sounds really nice. And then we've got a tiny boost with the high shelf, 1.6K, and a tiny boost with the low shelf. So the EQ curve's getting like a tiny smile to it, and then we're giving it a nice little boost at 5.6K to add that presence to the guitar. And that's sort of pulling the mid-range back for us now. And now we've got compressor two. We're just pushing this in for a light touch of compression. Because it's on the bus, we don't really want to compress it too hard because we've got multiple guitars happening at once. So just a little bit of glue here. Sounds pretty good. Two to one ratio, sort of like a medium fast recovery time, slow attack. That really helps those guitars shine in the mix a whole lot nicer. All right, and then we've got this ripping guitar solo over here, and I've done a little bit to kind of spice this up a bit. So our settings are not dramatically changing the sound, but they're keeping the solo present and in our face, which is what we want. We want the guitar solo to be heard. We want to hear all the notes. And without this, some parts of it are getting a little lost and clouded in the mix. So I'm driving the saturation kind of hard here, and we're pushing that up to 12, and then brought the mix knob back to 26%. And that sounds like this. So adding a little bit of extra drive and kind of like zing to the guitar and that's kind of helping it be present in the mix and just a little bit of that. And next we've got EQ2. So we're gonna boost 3.5K. So you can remember on our rhythm guitars, we boosted 5.6. So for our solo, we don't really wanna boost exactly the same frequency ranges and 3.5K is gonna cut a little bit more with a solo as well. 2.3 was a little bit nasally. So this was kind of like the sweet spot for giving the guitar just like a little bit of extra bite. So we're pushing that up about 1.7 dB. High shelf, 1.9, low shelf, nothing. A little bit of bite. On its own, the solo sounds quite nice and cozy, but in the mix, I think it needs that little bit of extra zing to help it cut through. And then following up with compressor two, 
three to one ratio, fairly fast recovery, again, not the fastest, and then a slower attack. Pretty awesome. And so that's everything. So that's how we've used Filk Channel to really spice this mix up and just add some life to it. Let's listen to it again without all of these Filk Channels turned on. So for all the level match police out there, it's fairly level matched and it sounds pretty sweet to me when you hear all the excitement and color it brings to it, it sounds really cool. And you know, the raw sounds, they're not bad at all. We're working with some nice sounds here, but the Filk channel is bringing this stuff to life. So if you guys like this plugin, check out the description link below and there'll be a link to it to where you can go and grab a copy of it. And by using that link, you really help support this channel as well. And also if you wanna support my channel, check out my website in the description below. Go check out some drum samples, mix courses, all that stuff is a massive support. If you're keen to check out another plugin from Kybe Audio, check out this next video coming up where I'll run you through their complex compressor and how to get some awesome sounds out of it.